Hello everyone, my name is Lauren Jane. I'm a junior doctor. I'm currently in F2. Um, I'm also pregnant. This video is about how I survived my first trimester. So this video is really in two parts. The first part is my recollections as I filmed them as I went along in my first trimester. I'm now in the third. Um, and those recollections are basically just me saying how tired and sick I feel. Um, it does get better if that's where you are. And the second part of the video is going to be some themes that I found, some things I found difficult and what things I found helped to try and get me through that period. Good morning, everyone. Or I say morning, it's like 11.45. Um, I apologise for the wet hair. Um, I am dressed, but the dressing gown is like a last minute moment of kind of reluctance to go to work. I'm on one nines this afternoon and I am so tired. I'm now seven weeks pregnant and these are only eight hour shifts but they're really long days on uh, an early miscarriage ward so it's clocking people all day yesterday i didn't get a break for eight hours and um just was simply trying to get through each patient and then everyone else left and you're the only doctor there and it's kind of difficult to go um i've woken up with an absolutely stonking headache this morning and i think that's probably because i wasn't drinking and hydrating yesterday i think anyone who works as a doctor knows sometimes it's really hard to go and take your breaks becomes an extra level of thing when you're pregnant because there's something in your brain that's like do you know what we need to look after this other little person first and I actually didn't get that balance right yesterday so I'm hoping that today uh, will be better I've got training most of today anyway so I'm only going over to the miscarriage unit between five and uh, nine so hopefully it will be okay um I just I feel so flat you can probably see like I've got no energy whatsoever I'm not sure how I'm gonna get through the day not being able to have caffeine doesn't help and I feel constantly sick all the time. So I felt sick for about two weeks at this point. I don't know why they call it morning sickness when you feel like this all day. I do get some respite if I'm literally eating something at that moment. But as soon as it's gone from my mouth and my throat, I feel sick. I'm not actually vomiting yet. In my last pregnancy, I was really, really sick from week seven to week 18. and I was vomiting all the time. And I really hope that that's not the case with this baby because I, I can't afford to take the time out of training to be able to, to be sick. So I'm hoping this is as bad as it gets. Um, I also should be applying for a speciality role next month in November. Unfortunately, I obviously can't do that now because I'm pregnant, which is great news. But there's a part of me that also feels like I want to get off F2 and I want to progress and move on at the same rate as everyone else. And that's not going to happen. So it, it very much feels like a mixed bag at the moment. I really need to leave to go to work, but my bed is so comfy. <laughs> I just can't leave. Pregnant women should get um, the first trimester off, I think. So I am now um, eight weeks and two days. I had a scan at the weekend, which showed that the pregnancy is intrauterine, which is reassuring because obviously we, we did lose one beforehand. So I guess at this stage, you just never know. Um, unfortunately, I'm becoming more and more sick. So if you saw the earlier part of the video, I think I said I was nauseous. I'm now being sick a lot. So I've been sick like six times today. I feel like I'm about to be sick now. And today I've been on an advanced simulation. So probably all of you have done a simulation. You know how intense it is and that you have to you have to really bring your A game. You can't just sit there and, you know, be back of the class. You've got to go and kind of be in a scenario and run a scenario and do all of that stuff and the whole time I was like please just don't be sick because obviously I'm still at that point where I can't tell anyone that I'm pregnant so I can't say I'm sorry I feel really sick I'm gonna go to the toilet and be sick now you just have to pretend that you're okay and it's incredibly incredibly difficult um I have got maybe perhaps my spirits are a bit higher today than they were they have been previously but I think that's because I'm on the safe with a blanket um the thought of going to work tomorrow is killing me. Oh God, I feel like I'm gonna be sick. I'm not sleeping very well. I'm gonna be sick. I'm not sleeping very well at the moment. Um, obviously my work days are really hard. At least I've got I've got teaching tomorrow from one till five, so I only have to get through the morning and then just sit in teaching and just stare, and not be sick. That's all I have to do is not. Oh, I'm gonna be sick. I am now um, ten weeks and two days. I'm off work so this is the fifth day off I've had in this rotation it's the fifth day off I've had in about eight months um so my absence at work is not particularly high but I'm sitting here and I'm feeling just super super guilty for taking 
time off work. I think it's because we move in blocks because it's obviously segments every four months you move. If you have four or five days off, it feels like you're always off work. But I've been so sick over the weekend. I can't keep anything down. Like my sick bucket is now my best friend. And I'm going to go to the GP. I'm going to get some metoclopramide or something. But it's been a really difficult few weeks. And I'm just sitting here and thinking if I was in any other job, I don't think I'd feel anywhere near this guilty for taking time off. I mean, I'm genuinely really ill. I'm being sick like 10 times a day. Um, and I just think that it's one of the things that makes it really difficult about being a doctor, especially when you're moving every four months, is that people don't know you. So if you do have time off, all of a sudden it's like maybe this, you know, you're a person who's off all the time and that's really not the case. And as much as I'm feeling sick and I'm feeling unwell and tired, actually, the thing that's bothering me the most right now is this guilt over not being at work. That's really stressful. Um, what can you do? I am at 10 weeks and six days today. I managed to do a C-section the other day, which is great because I've been avoiding that stuff. Actually, the sickness that I've been having has been easing off the last few days. I'm feeling so much better. Um, I don't know if I said earlier, but I did tell everyone quite early on um, that I was pregnant because obviously I, I've been really poorly and I've not been able to hide it. So I think if you want to go to 12 weeks, without telling people at work you're pregnant if you're as poorly as I am that's that's quite hard to do because you're working really extreme hours and sometimes you just need to be able to say look I'm gonna go and sit down because I'm not feeling very well etc etc so in summary it was a really really difficult experience being pregnant and working full-time as an F2 um one of the things that I found most difficult in the, that uh, first early trimester was the tiredness and that's just because the hours we work are long anyway I think being a, a junior doctor particularly takes a lot of stamina and I often feel that if there's something else going on that can really trip you up at work because it's the job is so demanding both emotionally and physically and when you're pregnant you just don't have those reserves to be able to kind of just get on with it like you would usually so what I found was that I needed to tell people fairly early on actually so I think I told people I was pregnant around the seven week mark I didn't tell uh, necessarily my extended family and friends at seven weeks but I would tell people who I worked on the wards with just because often I think as junior doctors, we are um, working beyond what we should. You're constantly, this goes for all healthcare staff, really. You are working through breaks, you're pushing through, you can do a good eight hours without having a drink or a wee. And before I got pregnant, I would do that all the time. And when I was in my first trimester, I would often find myself going six hours without a drink. And I would have to say, right, you've got to stop. You've got to go and get a drink. But if people don't know you're pregnant, that attitude is not always supported. So what I found was that just telling people that, you know, I'm in an early pregnancy really changed the, the way I was looked after on the ward. The nurses were amazing. They would often bring me drinks. They would you'd tell me off if, I, if I'd gone four or five hours without having a break. Um, one time they, even, they would bring me like drinks and sandwiches and just make me feel really cared for and really warm. Um, nurses are amazing for that kind of thing and that really made the difference to me in those long shifts actually the second issue that I had which might not be an issue for all of you is the nausea was awful um, I'd had hyperemesis I didn't know when I was filming these videos that you just watched that I would have hyperemesis until 27 weeks um, so the nausea that I had was really only just starting and it would be really quite bad until about 18 or 19 weeks and then it started to subside, but I was still being sick till in, into almost the third trimester, which is really difficult. And actually, this threw up a lot of issues for me because um, I was working on I was obs and gynae at this point, And I spent a lot of time working on the early pregnancy ward. So what I would do is I would have these lozenges, which would help me manage the nausea. And I would, if I didn't have them, I was knew I was going to you know basically be sick without them but it's very difficult to go and see a patient with a lozenge in your mouth because what do you say I'm sorry it's a cough sweet you know sorry I'm, <laughs> I might infect you with my sore throat or whatever well actually you don't have a sore throat but because it was the early pregnancy unit and a lot of the women that I was seeing were coming in with miscarriages it just felt really insensitive for me to be able to for, for me to say to them I'm really sorry I've got these sweets that stop me being sick because it doesn't sound very professional having a sweet in your mouth when you see a patient doesn't seem very professional um, and it feels insensitive to say to someone who's potentially losing their baby or 
potentially not losing their baby, but not aware of that at that point, that you're still pregnant and you've got these really hearty symptoms that they probably kill for at that at that point. So that that created quite a lot of emotional tension uh, in me at that at that point because I just didn't want to make anyone feel bad. But at the same time, I just couldn't function, you know, in that in that moment without those sweets. I was being sick all the time. And actually, this had sort of lasting effects for me because uh, I had about so so far up to this point, I've had about eight days off with the high premises since uh, August. It's now um, April, and those eight days off didn't really go down well. I think we all know what it's like. Um, absence is not always looked upon well, and I actually found this really difficult because I. I was obviously working with early pregnancy and you'd see many women that had high premises and what would happen is they would say oh you know work being really fantastic I've been off for three weeks and sometimes they would be in better shape even though hospitalized than I was and that was really really hard because I was thinking Do you know what? I should probably be at home trying to rehydrate myself but actually I've been sick six times today and I'm just sort of carrying on and that really almost led me to the point of burnout because I really felt like like that work ethic wasn't necessarily being recognised and it was just like, oh, you've had, I see you've had another day off. And that, that was really difficult because I'm a really hard worker and I found that difficult because it's sort of, you know, very stressful. Um, another thing that I wanted to touch on was the kind of stigma. So can we talk about this? Is this a, is a thing that still exists in 2020? Is pregnancy a stigma stigma for a, for a doctor? And I think yes, it is. I think it's different depending on where you work. But you know, I am um, I'm interested in surgery, and I think certainly sometimes in surgical um, specialities, there's often a feeling that we're here 100 percent of the time, and it's either you're in 100 percent or you're out. There's no middle, and I think this applies a lot to people that have physical health and mental health problems as well is that either you are doing 100% of the work or you're not doing any of the work. There's no kind of, you can't step in necessarily and say, or, or sorry, or there's, there is the um, perception, of course, and that's what you can do. So, you know, no one, throughout the course of my pregnancy, no one has ever said anything that's made me feel lesser. People have been really supportive. But in my head, I've always felt like I'm not contributing as much that I'm not necessarily taken as seriously as other people because I'm pregnant, I already have another child. Um, but whether that is, that's my perception of a situation that's not there based on historical facts, or whether that's me inferring from previous situations that that's the case, is is anyone's guess. Um, so I have I have tried to think think that it's the former and it's that, that it's my own insecurities about wanting to be a surgeon and a woman and have children that have necessarily led to those kind of um, feelings um, because no one said anything that's made me uncomfortable at all but I have felt sometimes a little bit like I'm not contributing as much like I'm not going to be taken as seriously. It's been fine to get off all of my appointments I ended up having a lot of scans in the end so I had an MRI I ha I've had um, scans every four weeks because my baby was SGA for a little while. She's all right now. Um, and all my midwife appointments and things like that. There's been absolutely zero problem being released to be att to attend for those. That was no problem at all. Just made sure that my educational clinical supervisors were aware and that my road coordinator was aware and she was really supportive. Um, there was some discussion about antenatal classes, whether they came counted as... Uh, company time where they had to take leave um, but that's a third trimester thing that I'll talk about in another video so I think the topics that I want to cover in another video are sort of how my maternity pay has worked um, how I've been with the second and third trimesters um, antenatal classes and things like that so I wanted to finish on a positive note so it's not all been doom and gloom I've still managed to do things like qualify as an ILS instructor I've done all of my courses um, I've worked full-time and kind of done well I've got a good tab of feedback so it it doesn't have to have to necessarily KO your life even though it can be quite intense at the time and I should also say before I forget um the only other thing that I wanted to say about pregnancy was about baby brain so because you're so tired in the first trimester 
um, and because the nature of what we do is so high stakes, I was one of the things I was most concerned about was making mistakes. So usually I check everything twice when I was pregnant, especially in the early days, I would check everything three times, have a really low threshold for talking to colleagues about things, just because you know that you're not quite as sharp necessarily as you would be usually. Um, there was an occasion where I got a taxi home from work and I was in the taxi and I was talking to the driver about there being ice on the ground and he I was thinking to myself how do I how do I know in such detail that there was ice on the ground this morning and then I thought oh that's because I drove to work this morning and what I had done is I'd driven to work put it in the hospital car park and then I'd forgotten that I'd driven to work and got a taxi home and I was so embarrassed that I just let the taxi driver drive me home I didn't say to him can we go back to the hospital please because my car is there so like, you know, this baby brain thing is, is definitely real. And I was really concerned how that would affect me as a doctor. So I just was very, very careful. Go slower if you need to. Double check things as you need to. And if you need extra advice that perhaps you wouldn't usually, then that's fine as well. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. Any questions are welcomed. Um, thank you for listening. Bye.